Let me cheer the pot, love. Anybody in there? Do you mind? It's all right. I was listening to Andre Previn. Oh, yeah? What was he singing? How ignorant can you get? <laughs> Never heard of it. Philistine. <laughs> anyway, what's all this sudden interest in classical music? Well, it's really for the baby. I have to keep relaxed and happy and think beautiful thoughts. It's all in this book. How about thinking some beautiful thoughts about cooking breakfast? No, I've cut out to cook breakfast. All that cholesterol's bad for the baby. What about the daddy? <laughs> well, it won't do you any harm to cut down on fried breakfasts. Being overweight's bad for you. So is not eating. <laughs> I read an article in my magazine about overeating. Do you know two and a half percent of people in this country die of overweight? If I don't have something to eat, 50% of the people in this kitchen are die of starvation. <laughs> Statistics can't lie. Oh, yes, they can. You said two and a half percent. That's two and a half people in every hundred. So? How can half a person die? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're only half dead. <laughs> oh, well, I'll just have some tea then. There is some tea, I presume. Yeah, there's plenty of tea. It's in that canister marked tea. <laughs> Haven't you made any tea? I'm off tea and coffee now, I'm pregnant. I'm cutting out caffeine. What about me? You can boil a kettle, can't you? <sighs> what was that in aid of? No smoking. You're the one who's pregnant, not me. If you want a cigarette, go outside. I don't want to inhale your secondhand smoke. Ah, oh, I think you're carrying things too far. Well, it's all in this book. You should read it. No, thanks. The diagrams make me feel ill. Good morning. Good morning. How's the mother-to-be? Fine. But I think the father-to-be's wilting. <laughs> Cheer up, Murray. Only another seven months to go. If I live that long. Good morning, all. Not for me, it isn't. What's the book? Oh, er, uh, nothing. Oh, it must be something. Let's have a look. No. A bit naughty, is it? No, it isn't. Let's have a look, then. Now, give that in back to me. In a minute. In a minute. Where do babies come from? <laughs> oh, Paul, didn't your mummy tell you? Of course she did. Paul has to give a sex education lesson to his class this morning. Sounds a bit like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> is that your job, Paul? Not really. Mr Bishop, the biology teacher, usually does that, but unfortunately he's in hospital with two broken legs. His own, I presume. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. It happened yesterday. He was out bird watching. A dirty old biologist. <laughs> He's an ornithologist. A horny what? Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, it's the best I can do on an empty stomach. <laughs> well, anyway, Mr. Bishop fell out of a tree. But I thought you normally teach English. Why has the headmaster asked you to give a sex lesson? He didn't ask me. He told me. It's a question of communication. He seems to feel I'm nearer the pupil's age. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, darling. I'm sure you'll cope. I hope so. I shall just have to look upon it as a lesson in advanced biology. <laughs> we never had sex at school. We did. Mostly behind the bike shed. <laughs> I'm talking about lessons. So am I. I learned an awful lot. Much. Well, I'd better be off. Oh, don't you want any breakfast? No, no. I'm too nervous to eat. I'll, uh, I'll see you tonight. Good luck with your lesson, darling. And whatever you do, don't give them any homework. <laughs> I think I'll go and have a nice soak in the bath for half an hour. Well, aren't you going to work today? No, we're going to the antenatal clinic this afternoon. It's our first visit. Do I have to come? You don't have to, Murray. Good. But you're going to. <laughs> hey, Marsha, you know what you said you did behind the bike shed? Yes. Were you really joking? Of course I was. It was usually in the boiler room. <laughs> instead of Bandy Bishop, remember? Oh, yeah. There's a right Wally. I think he's lovely. Here, we'll have some fun with him, Jimmy. Yeah. Don't be nasty to him, he's nice. Good morning, class. Good morning, Mr. Hatfield. As you know, Mr. Bishop will be away for some time due to his unfortunate accident while bird watching. <laughs> um, so you, you've got me for two periods this morning. Clark? Yes, sir. What have you got in your mouth? Uh, me teeth, sir. <laughs> Don't be facetious, Clark. You know very well what I mean. Bubble gum, sir. 
disgusting habit. Uh, one of me back teeth is missing, sir, so I'm using it to fill up the hole. <laughs> a likely story. Get rid of it. Yes, sir. Not under the desk. Wrap it in a piece of paper and put it in the waste paper basket. Deborah. Yes, Mr. Atfield. Uh, will you give everybody one of these textbooks? Certainly, Mr. Atfield. Thank you. It's my pleasure. <laughs> um, today, we are, are going to talk about reproduction. My dad does a lot of that, sir. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Wilcox? He makes chairs, sir. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we are, are not going to discuss reproduction furniture. What are we going to discuss, sir? Uh, well, reproduction of things. We've, we've done frogs and tadpoles, sir. Ah, ah yes. Well, 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 that's a very primitive example of reproduction. Today, I want to talk to you about mammalian reproduction. Now, uh, you all know what a mammal is. Uh, yes, Sharon? A living creature which suckles its young, sir. Well done, Sharon. Right, now, now let's take the, the rabbit as an example. Where do rabbits come from? Yes, Clark? Tesco, sir. <laughs> Pardon? Well, that's where my mum gets ours from, sir. She says they're cheaper than the butchers. <laughs> I am not talking about dead rabbits, Clark. Live ones. Where do live rabbits come from? Burrows, sir. <laughs> All right, I, I'll be more specific. Where do baby rabbits come from? Didn't you do biology when you was at school, sir? <laughs> of course I did. Uh, then why don't you know where baby rabbits come from, sir? I know where they come from. I'm trying to find out if you know where they come from. Please, sir. Yes, Sharon. A baby rabbit is the result of an egg which is fertilised internally. Exactly. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> and it, it, it's very similar with men and women. Women don't have rabbits, sir, they have <laughs> Well aware of that fact, Clark, but how does a, a woman have a baby? Uh, yes, Deborah. Sexual intercourse, sir. Absolutely. Pardon? <laughs> My mum told me all about it, sir. You see, once a month, a woman's ovaries release an egg which travels along the fallopian tube. And in order to fertilise this egg, a man has... Yes, well, to... thank you very much. <laughs> um, uh, all turn to, to chapter four. Oh, what about chapter three, sir? No, from what I've just heard, you're way beyond chapter three. <laughs> you know what I've forgotten? What? My specimen. <laughs> what specimen? You know, they gave me a little bottle. I had to bring a specimen. Was it that tiny little bottle on the shelf in the bathroom? <laughs> yes. Oh, sugar. <laughs> You didn't throw it away. No, I thought it was a miniature whiskey. <laughs> Only joking, love. <laughs> Here it is. Thanks. <sighs> I think we'll have to wait long. We've only just got here. I hate hospitals. Why? They make me feel ill. <laughs> anyway, they remind me of my poor old Uncle Sid. Never heard of him. Well, he's dead now. Spent most of his life in hospital. Oh, how awful. What was wrong with him? Did he have something incurable? No, he was a hospital porter. <laughs> Would you like to come through to examination room number four, please? Shall be long, Murray. Hey, what are they going to do to you? Oh, check my blood pressure, weigh me, listen to the baby's heartbeat, make sure there's only one in there. There better had be. <laughs> Nurse? Doctor. No, I'm not a doctor. I'm waiting for my wife. <laughs> I'm a doctor. Oh, sorry. Have you got a light? Hello? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. You, uh prospective father. No, I'm a brain surgeon. <laughs> oh, you're off duty then. Are you? <laughs> it was a joke. Oh. Wait for your wife. Yeah. So am I. Hey, you're not supposed to smoke in here. I'm not smoking in here. Oh. 
Well, if you're not, I will. <laughs> you just said you can't smoke in here. I'm not gonna smoke it in here. I'm smoking in the loo. <laughs> Sorry, um, I was just, um, <laughs> passing the time, you know, waiting for my wife. Yes. Yes, well, I've got some news for you. She's all right, isn't she? She is. Something wrong with the baby? Oh, no, nothing wrong with the babies. Babies? <laughs> She's having twins? Try again. <laughs> Triplets? Keep going. <laughs> Four? Bye. <laughs> right. Who can give me a definition of the word noun? Yes, Deborah. A noun is a word that is used to name any person, animal, thing, idea, state, or quality, sir. Well done, Deborah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, a noun can be one of four genders. What are the four genders? Come along now. What gender are you, Wilcox? Masculine, sir. Good. Another gender, Sharon. Feminine, sir. Clark. Gay, sir. <laughs> Gay is not a gender, Clark. The other two are common, which is a noun that can be either masculine or feminine, such as a child, an animal, and neuter, which is applied to inanimate objects, and could easily apply to most of you in this room. <laughs> now. Can anyone give me an example of a feminine noun? Yes, Sharon. An actress, sir. Very good. Um, a common noun, anybody? Yes, Clark? Jimmy Wilcox, sir. <laughs> Jimmy Wilcox is not a common noun. He is. There's nobody more common than what he is. <laughs> you are here to learn, Clark, not to make feeble jokes. Yes, sir. Can you give me a common noun? A fly. Right. Um, a masculine noun. Yes, Wilcox. A spaceman. Good. And finally, a Newton noun. Yes, Deborah. A chair, sir. Very good, Deborah. <laughs> right. Um, Sharon, uh, give me the feminine of Duke. Duchess. Good. Clark, the feminine of Drake. Mrs. Drake. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just tell you? Sorry, sir. No. That's better. Wilcox, the masculine of peahen. Peahen, sir. <laughs> Peacock. Oh, yes, yeah. sorry, sir. Saved by the bell. Remember, you have an essay to write for tomorrow. Excuse me, sir. Yes, Deborah. Could I ask your advice, sir? Certainly, then. It's very personal, sir. Well, well, that's all right. I'm I'm a man of the world. What's the problem? Well, I met this boy last week at a disco, Gary. Oh, yeah? And he wrote me a letter saying he loved me. Really? And Peter found the letter. Oh, dear. And he's very jealous. Peter? No. Ah, uh, Gary? No. Philip. He works with Peter. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm getting a bit confused, Deborah. Um, who is Philip uh, jealous of, Peter or Gary? Malcolm. <laughs> Sorry I asked. Trouble is, Malcolm keeps pestering me. I've heard of safety in numbers, but this is ridiculous. What do you think I should do, Mr. Atfield? Well, if I were you, Deborah, I'd keep them all on a very long piece of string. Enjoy yourself, but I wouldn't get too serious with any of them. You must save yourself for Mr. Wright. Thank you, sir. Not at all. I do like you, sir. <laughs> yes, uh, and I'm very fond of you too, Deborah. Now, if you'll excuse me, I, I must get along. Deborah, are you coming? He just said he was very fond of me. Who did? Mr. Wright. I mean, Mr. Atfield. Are you all right? Yes. Listen, Jimmy and Terry are going to a disco at the community centre tonight. Do you fancy coming? I can't. Mr. Atfield's going to take me to the pictures. <laughs> oh, did he ask you? He doesn't have to. I'm going to ask him. 
What happened? You fainted. Oh, oh yeah. It's all coming back to me now. Is it true my wife's going to have twins? Yes. Oh, blimey. Poor old Di. I bet she's not exactly ecstatic about it. She doesn't know yet. I thought it might be best if you were there when I told her. Oh, excuse me. Dr. Hunter. Right, I'll be along immediately. Sorry, I have an emergency. One of our mothers-to-be seems to be ahead of schedule. What about my wife? Oh, there's no problem. She's perfectly healthy. You can break the news to her. Be sure to do it gently and tell her we'll want to see her in here every week to monitor her progress. Excuse me, I must go. Sorry I was so long. You all right, Murray? <laughs> oh, I'll, um, I'll, I'll tell you in the pub over a drink. I've told you. I've stopped drinking. I think you might start again very soon. <laughs> no, I won't. Guess what? They've told me the possible date of the birth. Oh, yeah? Yep. That's good, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Five's my lucky number. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello. Did you have a good day? Oh, terrible. Oh, dear. I had to take dictation from Mr. Gropey. Mr. Gropey? Yes, the junior partner. I thought your junior partner was a Mr. Lewis. He is. Then why do you call him Mr. Gro... Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> He's got more hands than an octopus. No girl is safe in the office when he's around. Why don't you all complain? Well, some of them like it. <laughs> anyway, how did you get on? Was your sex lesson successful? No, superfluous. They seem to know more about sex than we do. <laughs> Sit down. Thanks. You all right, Diana? Tell them, Murray. Um? Tell them, Murray. We're having quins. Quins? Five? Five little McCoys? That's right. What a ghastly prospect. You can't believe it. Are you sure? Ask Murray. Yeah, it's the truth. The doctor told me. I don't know what we're going to do. Well, for a start, you'll need a big pram. <laughs> Just think of all those nappies to change. It'll be like painting the fourth bridge. What do you mean? Well, by the time we put a clean nappy on the fifth one, the first one will have done another poo. <laughs> No, it won't. Of course it will, you wally. We'll have to have five push chairs, five lots of clothing, five lots of everything. Not to mention the four au pairs. Four au pairs? Yes. Diana won't be able to wheel five push chairs. <laughs> I don't know where we're going to get all the money. The sponsors will pay for it all. What sponsors? Manufacturers of baby soap, baby clothes, baby food, nappies, you name it. They'll be queuing up to ask you to sign a contract. What are you talking about, Paul? No. The boy's right. I never thought of that. Quinn's a big news. And it won't stop at baby things. They'll be able to sponsor things all through their lives. Teenage things, cosmetics, clothing, bikes, TVs. We're going to be rich. It'll be better than winning the pools. Well, I'm glad you think so. I'm going upstairs to have a lie down. You can bring me up a glass of warm milk. I haven't got time. I've got things to do. People to see. Deals to arrange. <laughs> I'll bring you up a glass of milk, Di. Thanks, Marsha. Right. I'll see you later. I think I'll start with the brewery. Brewery? Babies don't drink beer. No, but I do. <laughs> I can just see me on TV now. Drinking Bradshaw's bitter may be fit enough to father five. <laughs> I'll get it. Perhaps it's leaked out already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I must be at the wrong house. I thought Paul Atfield lived here. He, he does live here. We, we both do. Oh, I didn't think he was like that. <laughs> he isn't. Neither am I. In fact, I'm very happily married and about to become the proud father of Quinns. Oh, good. Congratulations. Where's Paul? Oh, look, through there, down the steps, first on the left. Lord, who are you? Speak, Deborah. Deborah? Deborah Peters. 
Oh, well, 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 so you are. I, I, I didn't recognise you. You look so... Um... Mature? <laughs> yes. I'm wearing a bra and everything. <laughs> I should hope so. Um, w w what do you want, Deborah? You. Pardon? Oh, Paul. You don't mind if I call you Paul, do you? Well, I... I was so happy today when you told me how fond of me you were. Oh, no, 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 Deborah. I think you're making a big mistake. No, I'm not. I've always liked you, Paul. I know you're older than me, but what does that matter when two people are in love? Love? Oh, God. <laughs> what is going on? Um, this, 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 this is Deborah, uh, one of my pupils. <laughs> oh, yes. And what are you both doing on the settee? Practicing a little advanced biology? Who are you? I happen to be Mrs. Hatfield. Oh, Paul! I didn't realise you lived with your mother. <laughs> Are you waiting for somebody? Uh, my wife. Oh, all right. Your wife will be out in a moment, Mr. Baxter. Right, nurse. Just a minute. Are you, Mr. Baxter? Uh, yes. Well, who was the other fellow that was sitting here earlier this afternoon? That would have been Mr. McCoy, Doctor. Oh, dear. I thought he was Mr. Baxter. No, good Lord. I've told the wrong man his wife's having quins. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You sure you're all right now, Deborah? Yes, thank you. You'll get over it. Men, they're all the same, aren't they? Hello? Oh, just a moment. Uh, Diana, it's for you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you can come out now. Has she gone? <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. How embarrassing. Oh, it's perfectly normal. Most schoolgirls get a crush on one of their teachers. I did when I was at school. Which teacher did you have a crush on? The French teacher. Oh. And the maths teacher, the arts teacher, the head teacher, the gym teacher, the sports... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Hey, I... Murray, I've got some good news. So have I. The hospital just rang. They were wrong about me having quins. Is it half a dozen? No, only one. What? Yes, your doctor mistook you for someone else. Oh, no. Oh, come on, Murray. It's a lovely surprise. Surprise? Yeah. Talking of surprises, follow me. 